Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to take up the fourth numerical on sampling theorem. Let me read out the question first. The signal V of t equals cos 5 pi t plus 0 0.5 into cos 10 pi t is instantaneously sampled. The interval between the samples is ts seconds. Part of the question is find the maximum allowable value for ts. You should note ts is the sampling period here. Part b of the question says if the sampling signal s of t equals summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity 5 into delta of t minus 0.1 k the sample signal consists of a train of impulses each with a different strength that is the sample signal is given by vs of t equals summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity i k into delta of t minus 0.1 k. So we are asked to find the values of i0, i1, i2 and show that the value i k plus 4 is equal to i k. That is part B of the question. Lastly, to part C, to reconstruct the signal V of t, which is our original input signal, the sample signal V s of t is passed through a rectangular low pass filter. Find the minimum filter bandwidth required to reconstruct the original signal without distortion. Of course, the question may look a little bit daunting because it's just too big. However, the solution is quite easy. Let us start with the solution now. First and foremost, let us write down the given signal. Okay, so let this be called as cos 2 pi f 1 t and let this be cos 2 pi f 2 t. So I will write cos 2 pi f 1 t is equal to cos 5 pi t therefore f1 is equals to 5 by 2 equals 2.5 hertz in a similar fashion cos 2 pi f2 t is equal to cos 10 pi t therefore f2 is equal to 10 divided by 2 equals 5 hertz so we require these values of f1 and f2 to find out the maximum value of the sampling period ts because you see part e of the question is to find the maximum allowable value for ts. So let me start with part a of the question now. Now to find ts max we will be using the low pass or ideal sampling theorem. According to the ideal sampling theorem, the value of Ts must be less than or equal to 1 divided by 2w. In fact, you should note 1 by 2w is equal to 1 by Fs. Here, w is the highest frequency component of V of t. Now, to find the maximum value of Ts, we have to look into this symbol here which is less than or equal to. Ts will attain its maximum value when this symbol is replaced by an equal symbol. Therefore, I will write Ts max is equal to 1 divided by 2w which is equal to 1 divided by 2 into 5. 5 is the highest frequency component of our input signal. Therefore, it is equals to 0 0.1 seconds. This is the answer for part A of the question. Let me now move on to part B of the question. Part B of the question says V of t is the input signal. S of t is the sampling signal which is a train of impulses and V s of t is the sample signal. Now we know that from the ideal sampling theorem the sample signal V s of t is equal to the input signal V of t multiplied by the sampling signal S of t where S of t is given in the part B of the numerical. 
So what I will do now is to simply substitute S of t from part b into the equation here. So V s of t is equal to V of t multiplied by s of t is given as summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity 5 into delta of t minus 0 0.1 k. Okay. Now I will rewrite this and taking the summation to the left hand side I will get summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity v of t into 5 into delta of t minus 0 0.1 k. Now to simplify this I will be using the product property given by x of t into delta of t minus t naught is equal to x of t naught into delta of t minus t naught. So let me just call this as equation 1 and this as equation 2 and I will substitute equation 2 into equation 1 to simplify the right hand side of equation 1 as v s of t is equal to I will take the 5 which is a constant outside the summation then summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity we have v of t now becomes v of t naught and t naught please note is 0 0.1 k so this will be v of 0 0.1 k multiplied by delta of t minus 0 0.1 k okay so here we have v of t but t is 0 0.1 k now i'll go back to the numerical and I will look into what is V of t. It is cos 5 pi t plus 0 0.5 into cos 10 pi t. Now I have to substitute wherever there is a t here by 0 0.1 k which I will do it here. So therefore V s of t is equals to 5 into summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity. We have cos of 0 0.5 into pi into k plus 0 0.5 into cos of pi into k. This is v of 0 0.1 k. After that we have the delta function as it is. Right. Now what I will do, I will call this term including the 5 here as some term i k. So, i k is equals to 5 into cos 0 0.5 into pi k plus 0 0.5 into cos pi k. Right? So, therefore, V s of t equation now reduces to summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity i k into delta of t minus 0 0.1 k. Let me call this as equation 3. Now look at equation 3 carefully and let us go back to the numerical and check the equation given for V s of t. If you look at the RHS of these two equations they are exactly the same. Therefore we have now obtained an equation for i k. Further part b of the question says to find i0, i1 and i2. In order to do that, I will create a very small table here. Let k be the first column and i k be the second column. So we are asked i naught, so k is 0, i1, k is 1, i2, k is 2. Let me construct the table here. Then I will substitute k is equals to 0 into this equation. I will call it as star and I will find out what is i k. Now when k is 0 we have 5 multiplied by cos 0 plus 0 0.5 into cos 0. Cos 0 is 1 therefore it is 5 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.5. So it is 5 multiplied by 1.5 and therefore it will be 7.5. Okay. In a very similar fashion, when you substitute k is equals to 1, you will obtain i k as minus 2.5 and when you substitute k is equals to 2, you will obtain i k as minus 2.5 again. 
okay so therefore we have obtained the values of ik for k equals to 0 1 and 2 lastly we are also asked to prove the value of i k plus 4 is equal to i k. We are asked to do this as well. So now let me just go back and rewrite the equation for i k here. Right. So therefore i k plus 4 is equals to 5 into now wherever I have k I have to substitute it as k plus 4. So it will be cos of 0 0.5 into pi into k plus 4 plus cos of pi into k plus 4. Let us simplify this. This is equals to 5 into cos of 0 0.5 pi k plus 0.5 multiplied by 4 is 2. So it is 2 pi. Similarly, we have cos of pi k plus 4 pi. Now, we know that cos of x plus e1 pi is always cos of x. Therefore, i k plus 4 is equal to 5 into cos 0 0.5 pi k plus cos pi k. Now let me call this as equation 5 and I will now compare equation 5 with the i of k equation which is let me call it as equation 4. If you compare equation 4 RHS and equation 5 RHS you will find them to be exactly the same and therefore we can now say i k plus 4 is equal to i k. Right. So that is the end of part B of the question. Let us now move on and see what is the last part which is part C. The part C of the question says to reconstruct the original signal V of t, the sampled signal V s of t is passed through a rectangular low pass filter. We are asked to find the minimum filter bandwidth required to reconstruct the original signal without distortion. Now for this, we once again use the concepts from the low pass sampling theorem. Now as per the low pass sampling theorem, the reconstruction filter must have a bandwidth given by minus w less than or equals to f less than or equal to w. In simple words, the bandwidth of the reconstruction filter should be equal to w. Therefore, the minimum filter bandwidth in order to obtain the original signal from the sample signal is simply equal to 5 hertz because that is the value of W in the given signal. If I use such a reconstruction filter, then I can extract the original frequencies from the sample signal without any distortion. Right. So that's about this numerical. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.